We're gonna hook up to the header trailer with the service truck after landing if I ever get it in gear here. And take this header off and get, I got a 625 that I'm gonna cut oats with an 8820s. Carry it home, check the sickle out and the guards on it and make sure it's ready to go. because he's right on a ledge <laughs> just perfect to be wrong every time move over Mikey move we're back at the corn header and truck we're gonna pile pallets up underneath it to try to get it unhooked and get the header lean back enough where it'll unhook and then we're gonna set the other header off that truck and put my header on I'm gonna cut with oats on 9820, carry it home, check it all out. from it so now he can make his trip to El Campo Texas or Danavang I guess long drive but go down there and cut corn we're gonna pick up this header off our header trailer set it down pick up another one and put back on it to carry home so I can check it all out We got the 625 header hooked up for the 8820. We're getting ready to cut oats, and I got a new sickle to put in it. And which it ain't no big deal to put. We're taking out these two bolts right here, and loosen this one, and the whole sickle arm will come out. And then you just gotta work it back through every one of the guards. It's not that really that big a deal. You know, it's just time consuming. All right, we gotta roll it over to these two bolts around here to us. If I can get a hold of it, turn it here. Just like that. And take them out. Should slide right out. be able to start sliding out now. There it goes. We're going to have to try something different. That's as far as we got. Usually they'll slide right in if you've been cutting with them and you break one in the middle of cutting. 
But after they sit and get real rusty, they don't want to slide very good at all. All right, we're gonna get old town and country's rig here to use it. And you can't see them, but they are town and country wheels. Oh, for Dodge van, or Chrysler van, whatever they are. But it's still funny, we like giving them a hard time. All right, we're gonna take this little bitty come along here, hook to the sickle and back to his Jeep. That way it give us a little bit of leverage to help us get it out, because it's in there pretty dang good. most of the way out so we should just pull right out maybe I'll set y'all on it so y'all can get a personal view <laughs> This sickle been broke one time, right here when we were cutting beans. You can put a sickle repair kit in them, but this one, it's bent, and sometimes that don't work too good, and you just break them again. Niblet's painting his wheels here. You really don't call me Niblet. <laughs> we, we got it a little bit too white. We thought that it was close, but it's not. Not at all. I don't know how we managed to get it that white, but we did. What did you do? Oh my gosh. Uh, Why would we get the white? Did y'all? The way the header for a combine works is this reel pulls the plant back into these knives and this guard and this guard holds the plant so the knife can cut it off and when it gets cut off it falls back into this auger and this auger pulls it all to the center to go into the feeder house of the combine all right i'm going to show you how a combine works Once it goes, once the header cuts it, it goes into the feeder house here, which is chained, rolling towards us, pulling stuff in. Well, once it gets through the chain, it goes into the rotor. Now the rotor is inside here. You can see it right here. And it's spinning about 800 RPMs. And this is your concaves right here, all these little bars. And it'll move up and down, depending on how close you need to thrash the grain on to get it out of the stock. And like wheat, you want it closed up really tight because wheat's really little. And once it spin, it's spinning it around like this, and once it thrashes most of the grain out of it, the grain falls down on these augers, which they're turning. It carries it up here and then dumps it right here. And the shaker pan is moving back and forth. And there's supposed to be sieves right here and I'll show you what they look like in a minute. So once the grain, the straw comes into the feeder house right here, into the rotor, turns, and it beats most of the grain out of it from right here forwards. Anything that's left in the straw will get worked out between here and the back. Now looking up in the back of it, 
the rotor at the end of it is right here right there and it's spinning bringing the straw towards us and then this beater around the back flips it over and out right out the back on the ground and when the straw gets down here there's no more grain left in it now when the grain comes through the concaves which is up there underneath the rotor all five of these augers they're bringing the grain back this direction well this is supposed to have sieves in it and i'll show you what they look like in a minute but it's shaking back and forth and cleaning this there's a fan down here in the bottom blowing air up which is blowing all the junk out and the grain is heavy enough it falls down in the bottom which there's an auger right here and anything that's clean enough to go into the grain tank goes out this auger over here to the right up this elevator elevator right here through this auger and dumped into the tank when you get your tank full enough that's when you can unload your whole tank in the, your truck or gravity wagon or grain cart whatever and then it can go off to the bin or go off to wherever you're going to send it to now anything that isn't clean enough to go into the grain yeah. tank it, gets they, it shuffles it into this auger which is just a littler one and it carries it across over here to this elevator and which an elevator and what i mean it ain't like one in a hotel or something it's got little hands, little paddles that'll cup the grain and it'll carry it back up here all the way up to this little auger which is going right back into the side of the rotor here which is what we were just looking at if it ain't clean enough it just dumps it right back in and recleans it all again well then it's clean enough to go up your clean grain elevator all the way up to the top in the grain tank now to clean your grain really good and blow all the, the sticks and the chaff and all that away from your grain this is the fan right here and it don't look like a regular fan but it blows air it's running frontwards or i guess counterclockwise back into this trough which you can't see it but then it's blowing air from right here up which is blowing all the little junk and everything out the back and but your grain is heavy enough or if it's good grain it'll sink to the bottom and then go through all the cleaning the cleaning. Now here's the sieves i was telling y'all about this is the top one which is all your straw not all your straw but any little straw that's big enough to get through the concave is run over this now air is coming up from the bottom side up and you can adjust these little fingers taller or really flat like they are but you can stand them up pretty straight depending on how much of the, the junk and straw you want to hold back you want it to go on you can flatten them out pretty flat and then once it goes down through that sieve all your grain it hits this bottom one now you can close this bottom one really really flat if you want to run it back through that little auger or to return back up through the rotor so it'll clean it again that way the fan blows any extra junk and whatever you don't want in there now john deere combine the older series they were straw walker machines like this one international come out with a rotor which is spinning the length of the combine the john deere and gleaner and a lot of other ones they had a cylinder bar which is running across the combine and everything that gets through the feeder house and up the chain goes through it and it's hard to get to to show you what it looks like but it's just a bar about three inches tall all the way across and there's i don't know how many of them there is i don't remember but there's a bunch of them around it probably like eight and it's spinning in a circle it does all of the thrashing in one spot one little narrow spot and it's got concave just like the international that you can adjust on how how much how big your seed is like soybeans you want it opened up more and wheat you want it really really close and corn you want it open really really wide but it does all the thrashing in one spot then the straw walkers jiggle what's left of the grain out of the straw it'll jiggle it and then the grain will run right back down to the bottom which is where these augers and these 
big troughs right here. We'll carry it back down that way, and then it'll jiggle across the sieves. All right, we're looking behind the cylinder. Straw. Well, then the straw walkers will walk it up and out back here to the back. That's when I get back here. Then it dumps the leftover straw into the chopper. It is chopped up in a bunch of little bitty pieces. So that's kind of the where the straw goes in a straw walker combine. So after the grain falls through the concaves, it's carried through by these augers right here. And it's brought back this way to the sieves. And the top one will separate the grain from any little sticks or straw that's left. And then there's another one that looks just like this in the bottom underneath this. And that's your main cleaning sieve. And then it's got a fan also that's blowing air up through the bottom of the sieves to clean it. And it also has the same elevator set up. One's clean grain, one's a return. But they're both pretty well the same. This is an 87 model. And we think this one is like an 84. And what we're thinking. We're not sure on it. But they're pretty well the same combines. They just were designed a little bit different. But they both do the same. This combine is actually a rice combine. Which the rice rotor has littler littler blades on it or littler separating teeth on it and they're little short ones instead of long ones on a regular one a long one a regular long one is about oh six inches long and these aren't but about three mm -hmm. 